Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our series, Science in the Quran. We are going to take a bit of a detour from the things we've been talking about, I think in fact really an entirely separate topic. And I was asked to discuss the health benefits of fasting because that's a topic of significant interest to our audience. So I'm hoping, inshallah, that you will find the month not only spiritually fulfilling, but also a month of good health. So the Quran tells us, of course, in Surah Al-Baqarah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O you who believe, O you who have attained to faith, fasting is ordained for you as it was ordained for those before you, so that you might attain God consciousness. Taqwa. So that is, of course, the reason we fast. We fast as a spiritual duty out of obedience to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as so many of our co-religionists, not just in Islam, but along the long line of monotheism have done in obedience to the orders of God. So we're not fasting to attain health benefits. We're fasting for spiritual benefit, purification, rejuvenation, taqwa and God consciousness, inshallah. Now, verse 184 from Surah Al-Baqarah, I won't read the entire verse, but the end of the verse says, وَأَنْتَصُومُ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And if you fast, you do good unto yourselves if you but knew it. And of course, the question sometimes on people's minds is, as we try to do ourselves spiritual good, are we also doing ourselves physical good? Now we, of course, would fast, inshallah, regardless of the answer to that question, but it is nice to know that obedience to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only benefits us spiritually, but also benefits us in terms of health. So let me give a quote from one of the papers we will be using as a resource to showcase the tremendous health benefits that have been associated with fasting. Perhaps the first evidence that intermittent fasting, that's IF, that's the abbreviation commonly used in the medical literature, may confer widespread health benefits came from studies in which rats maintained on alternate day fasts, ADF, beginning when they were young, lived nearly twice as long as rats on an ad libitum diet. Ad libitum means you, you eat ad lib. That's where the term ad lib comes from, as you wish. So, in rats, fasting was shown to, in fact, double the lifespan. That line of evidence holds also in, in lower animals uh, and, and seems to be a conserved thing uh, through biology and physiology. When fasting was initiated in middle age, rats lived 30 to 40 percent longer, and there were benefits in terms of cognitive function, sensory and motor function, and so forth. So in the animal model, which is the best studied model of fasting, because you can do it under very controlled conditions, but certainly we share so much of our physiology with mammals, fasting is shown to be extremely beneficial. Now, before starting, I want to let you know that, of course, I'm not giving you my opinions here. I'm not making things up. I am taking things from established sources. And so I want to first acquaint you with the sources that all of this material will be coming from. So one of them is a, if you would like to call it a popular medical newsletter. Uh, it is not considered a hardcore scientific source. But the conclusion it reaches, or the question it asks, is fasting is commonly associated with the month of Ramadan. And it is asking, uh, while fasting for the month of Ramadan is because of spiritual beliefs. Many of us choose to fast with the belief that it benefits our health, but does it? So this is an article from Medical News Today, and the answer to the question in that article is, 
Quote, a number of studies have suggested intermittent fasting has numerous health benefits, including weight loss, lower blood pressure, and reduced cholesterol. Another source is, again, a popular web source, uh, this Authority Nutrition uh, source, this article by Chris Gunners. And he talks about 10 evidence-based health benefits of intermittent fasting. And in his article which I strongly recommend, he sources everything to the medical literature. It is a very well-sourced web article, and we will use it partially as our template as we go forward. Also, I went to the medical literature, and you'll notice we're dealing now with the most recent literature. This is an article from the journal Nutrition, published in 2017. It's a review article, meaning they've looked at all of the medical literature and tried to come to some conclusions, unraveling the metabolic health benefits of fasting related to religious beliefs and narrative review. Um, so that will be one of our main medical sources. And in this paper, they state that advantages of religious fasting are claimed by many, but have been explored mainly by a limited number of studies that have been conducted for Buddhist fasts, Christian fasts, and Muslim fasts, and these trials indicate that religious fasting has beneficial effects on body weight and glycemia, meaning our sugar control, cardiometabolic risk factors, our heart health, and oxidative stress parameters, and I don't need to tell you how important the topic of antioxidants and oxidative stress has become in modern medicine. The interesting thing is that the exact mechanisms of how fasting benefits the human being physically are still to be unraveled. The complexity in the cell is amazing, and a side benefit of our journey will be to touch very lightly on this complexity to make us appreciate the, the creation that... Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has built into each and every one of our cells. A second source is this paper from 2016 that is still in press to come out in 2017 from Aging Research Reviews. Again, this is now a serious medical paper. And it is another review paper, The Impact of Intermittent Fasting on Health and Disease Processes. And so for each of the papers, I will try to have a little logo referring to that paper so you see where the material comes from. And lastly, a paper from the journal Behavioral Sciences, Potential Benefits and Harms of Intermittent Energy Restriction. That's another name for intermittent fasting or dieting. Uh, intermittent fasting amongst obese, overweight, and normal weight subjects. A narrative review of human and animal evidence. Um, so these five sources, two from... Um, common respected uh, internet health sites, and three from the very recent medical literature will be uh, our source material. The data that we will quote will be both human data and animal data. And again, the animal data is very important here because it allows for strictly controlled conditions to be able to genuinely test the effects of fasting. The human data is much more limited than the animal data, but there is every reason to think that the conclusions from animal data will definitely generalize to human beings. So before we get into the specifics, what are the bottom lines? What are the big conclusions? So again, now you see that I'm giving you the logo of which paper this quote comes from. And sometimes I'll put things in quotes, and sometimes I will have changed a word or two or spliced something out just for flow. And in those cases, it will be nearly a direct quote, but I will always try to cite the source, inshallah. And so the bottom line in laboratory rats and mice, intermittent fasting, IF, and periodic fasting, from now on I'll just refer to these things as fasting have profound beneficial effects on many different indices of health and, importantly, can counteract disease processes and improve functional outcome in experimental models on a wide range of age-related disorders, including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancers, neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, 
Parkinson's disease and stroke. And so we see that fasting helps in a myriad of different areas from uh, diabetes, heart health, weight, to uh, cancer, to neurological diseases and brain health. And it helps us not get sick and it actually helps us recover when we are sick. Those are the amazing uh, outcomes in terms of fasting. And again, um, another now conclusion about human data from this same source is that there's efficacy for weight loss and improvements in multiple health indicators, including insulin resistance and reductions in risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So both the animal data and the human data coalesce on the benefits of fasting. And once again, we're now just beginning to unravel why and how at the cellular level. The cellular and molecular mechanisms by which fasting improves health and counteracts disease, we know that it involves changes inside the cell chemistry to help the cell be more adapted to stress, to have better mitochondrial health. The mitochondria are the energy storehouses and factories of the cell better DNA repair, and something called autophagy that we will talk about. And it's now being discovered that fasting also promotes uh, regeneration of stem cells and can have long-lasting metabolic effects after the fasting is done. And so we see that these effects are mediated by changes in hormone levels, like insulin and human growth hormone, changes in cellular repair, Fasting induces the cells to remove waste material and actually changes in gene expression. These are called epigenetics. It means we don't change our DNA, but we change which and how much of the DNA is transcribed and expressed. So, for example, your liver cells and heart cells have exactly the same DNA. You have all of the same chromosomes in each cell. What makes one cell a heart cell? What makes one cell a liver cell? It is changes in gene expression and fasting has now been found to change the expression of genes and to have beneficial effects related to longevity and to protection against disease. So this is a hint about some of the cellular mechanisms and then from here on out inshallah we will take specific topics and look at the medical evidence. And so that's the introduction, that's the bottom line, is that Spiritual obedience to the commandment of fasting turns out, by God's mercy and grace, to also have significant health benefits. And in the coming episodes, we will explore what some of these are. Salam alaikum.